It's worthwhile pointing out that just about on the back end of a storage array has an address. If it doesn't have an address, it can't be managed or monitored. Look at the diagram of the front of a drive enclosure that we've got on the slide. We can see that each drive and drive slot has an address. In our example, we've got 14 drive slots, numbered 1 through to 14. But it's not just disk drives and slots that have addresses. If we look at the back view of the same drive enclosure, we can see that there are multiple components there too. Again, each of these has its own address, so that it can be monitored and managed. Each power supply unit has an address, PSUA, PSUB. Each fan or blower has an address, everything. In fact, this is actually a good place to pause and take notice of the component redundancy on display. The back of this drive enclosure has got two of just about everything. Two power supply units, two blowers, two I.O. modules. Meaning, we can lose one of just about anything without affecting availability. But back to addressing. Each of these is addressable and therefore manageable and monitorable. If there even is such a word as monitorable. Also, each drive shelf or drive enclosure has an address on the back end. And we see this in the schematical diagram of the rear view of a single cabinet HP EVA storage array. If you look closely at the diagram, you'll see that we've got 12 drive enclosures in the rack. These are numbered 1 through 6 and 8 through 13, with the controllers there in the middle at number 7. But the important point being that every drive enclosure on the back end has an address. Enclosure 1 at the bottom, enclosure 2, enclosure 3, all the way up to enclosure 13 at the top. You get the picture. So we can now identify every component on the back end. For example, let's highlight enclosure 4, PSU2. Also, we just mentioned I.O. modules, and we can see two of them on the rear view diagram of the drive enclosure. These are the SAS cards, or they may be fibre channel cards, depending on your back end connectivity, but they provide the connectivity between the drive enclosures and the array controllers. It's important to note that all good storage arrays have dual redundant I.O. modules, so that if one fails, the surviving module can provide the required connectivity between the controllers and the drive enclosures. Now then, fortunately, you shouldn't have much to do with back-end addressing in your day-to-day -day job. For example, enterprise class arrays, those at the high end of the market, they tend to be installed and serviced by trained technicians from the vendor that you purchase your kit from. So in these cases, you don't get involved. But with the smaller and medium-sized arrays, these can often be customer installable and customer serviceable. In these cases, you may have to manually configure an address of a drive enclosure. Let's say, for instance, you happen to be installing a new one or replacing a failed one. However, even on these customer serviceable arrays, the job of addressing enclosures is often done automatically when the enclosure is connected. However, if you do have to manually set the enclosure address, make sure that you stick religiously to the vendor guidelines as it is technically possible that you could cause data corruption and lose data if you get the process wrong and if your array doesn't force you to assign specific numbers or addresses to enclosures still make sure that whatever you choose to number them that you document it and that you follow a logical numbering sequence like we see on the picture of the EVA back end here because following a logical sequence will help you immensely when it comes to troubleshooting. Now how you actually configure the controller address depends entirely on the array technology that you're working with. Some enclosures have a manual wheel switch that you turn and click to a specific number that will hard set the enclosure's address, whereas others have an LED that's set by pressing buttons. Either way, the point is take extreme care when doing this and follow the instruction manual. And on the topic of following vendor guidelines and instructions, I would say the same about cabling on the back end. Follow all best practices, especially when bending and routing cables. Bend them too much, especially fibre cables, and you can damage them beyond repair. Oh, and you never have to configure addresses for drives, power supply units, fans and the likes. This is always done automatically. Now, an important standards-based technology for managing and monitoring the environmental health of your storage array backend 
is SCSI Enclosure Services. As we mentioned briefly earlier in the lesson, SCSI Enclosure Services SES is a way to manage and monitor the environmental related conditions of your drive enclosures. SES is often implemented either on a processor in the drive enclosure or a dedicated environmental monitoring card installed in the enclosure. This card and the processors that it runs are responsible for monitoring the likes of power supplies, fans or blowers, enclosure temperature, status of drives and connectors, removal and insertion of drives and other field replaceable units called FRUs, everything like that on the back end. But as well as monitoring all of these, the SES environmental subsystem can tune things as well. A common and simple example being ramping up the blower speed if the temperature in the drive enclosure rises, and then slowing down the blowers when the temperature returns back to normal. In all of this monitoring and management, the environmental monitoring unit reports back to the controllers. Oh, and some environmental subsystems can even sound audible alarms to alert staff walking the data center floor of failure conditions. Right, since we've mentioned data centers and people walking data center floors, let's just switch gears a little and talk about security.